In this video, I'm going to 3D print and hand paint my own butterfly knife from the game CS2, but that's not all. I'm also going to make three other mystery knives too, and take you guys through my step-by-step -step process on how I design, print and paint these Counter-Strike replicas. The first knife I'm going to make has been requested a lot recently, and it's the stiletto knife. I've decided to go with a tiger tooth finish because I honestly think this skin suits the stiletto knife so well, and I'm up for the challenge of trying to create the woody handle. These knives are currently selling for about £350, which is on the high end for a CS2 stiletto knife, but honestly, I think it's well deserved. The stiletto is one of my favourite skins. I think it makes you look like an absolute gangster, especially when you get the rare inspect, so it's definitely a good choice for a tiger tooth. I started off by going onto Source 2 Viewer and extracting the Source 2 model as a 3D model that I can use in Blender. Now, this looks decent how it is, but if you look closely, there's actually huge gaps everywhere, and if I was to print this, you wouldn't even be able to flick the blade out like in-game, and this is a really important requirement for me. I spent about an hour messing around with the model, trying to separate it into printable parts that I'd be able to assemble easily and I eventually got there. I use a peg that I normally use for my butterfly knives to create a joint that I can assemble easily. Finally, I imported the models into my slicer, scaled it, messed around with the orientation and support settings to optimize quality and print time and hit print. The print actually came off looking great and I tested out the joint to make sure it was going to work out okay and it did. I actually managed to flick it around a decent amount which was really promising. The only thing was that the blade is kind of hyper extended a little bit but there should be lots of friction once I've painted everything. The side of the blade that had supports on it was quite messy so I spent a while tidying it up with some wood filler and sandpaper as well as smoothing out some of the polygons and checked if I could still flick the knife around. It was so uniform and smooth now that you could barely tell which side had supports on. After that I had to prime the parts which is nice and easy until I ran out of primer but luckily I had a spare can lying around to finish the job. The primer just helps the paint stick and it also smooths out the surface a bit more if you're wondering. Okay it's time to start painting and to do this I had to use some yellow spray paint and some tape to mask off the parts I need to keep clear for the wooden handle. This colour is actually pretty accurate, but it's obviously not exact. After waiting half an hour, I did another coat, and then once it was fully dry, I took the tape off and started prepping for the wooden handle. I literally had no idea how I was going to create this effect before I started the knife, so I had a look on the internet at some people painting fake wood, and luckily it didn't seem that complicated. All I did was a coat of orange with acrylic paint, and then I went on top of it with these shades of brown, and I just really layered up my brush to give it that organic feel. And yeah, I was not expecting it to be that easy. I'll tell you what wasn't easy, waiting around four days for this paint to dry because I put on about two centimeters of paint. I decided to detail the blade which, while I waited, and for this I used some metallic paint pens such as this gold marker, and this looks really good in the light. I went for these patterns all the way up the blade, and I made sure that they linked up around the edges too. I also put a thin line of silver along the edge of the blade to make it look sharp. Literally two days later, the handle was finally dry, and I carefully removed the tape. But yeah, I think this wood effect looks decent. I continued the gold designs on the top and bottom sections of the knife and I did some gold and black detailing on the handle. Here's me assembling all the parts together and yeah, I think this looks pretty decent. Only one thing, the paint is too sticky and thick to allow the blade to open like it used to. So you kind of have to bash it on something if you want to get the blade out, which isn't ideal, but at least it does actually open and close. Leave a like if you think this is good enough. Okay, it's time for the next knife and this one is going to be hopefully much faster and less effort than the stiletto because that genuinely took me about a week to develop and make. This finish got a huge buff in CS2. I done it many times before because it's simple yet effective. I'm going to be using the skeleton knife gems but no sapphire today because I had an absolute nightmare with a pet G. Just ruby and emerald. I used the source 2 viewer again to get the game files and there are no moving parts for this so I just whacked it into 3D Builder to repair the meshes, scaled it up and started printing. This one took about 8 hours per print because the skeleton knives are pretty big and I did have to use some support underneath the blade to deal with the overhang. The Ender 3 V3 does a great job of keeping them neat and after peeling off the supports with pliers they were looking good. All I had to do with this knife was add the handle with some electrical tape and it was ready. Although electrical tape is crap, it's not sticky so I just had to super glue the last strand down. Let me know what you guys think of this one. Normally I like to print these gem knives solid with the transparent filament, but since this knife is so wide, I actually left the infill inside, so you can see the patterns when you hold it up to the light. Let me know if you think this looks good or awful. Okay, it's finally time for the butterfly knife, and I want you guys to smash the like and subscribe before I even make this, because you're going to do it anyways once you see the masterpiece I'm about to create, so you might as well just do it now. Okay, thanks. I used the same files as the last time I made butterfly knives, so I didn't have to do any designing, I just started printing. I did everything together in black because it was going to paint the parts after anyways. 
The design that I'm going to use for this is supposed to be case hardened since one of you requested it, but honestly, it kind of just ended up morphing into its own design. After the prints came off, I took the parts that needed painting, the blading grips, down to the garage and hit them with some primer. After that, I selected the three colours that I use for case harden, blue, purple and yellow, and I just started spraying far away stripes across the components. Normally I hydro dip these, but I didn't want to hydro dip the parts because they were so small, so I just decided to try and blend the colours together, and it actually looked really cool. It didn't look like case hardened, but I still think it looks awesome, especially because the yellow and blue kind of blended together and made green. After waiting a few days for that to dry, I began assembly, and let me tell you, there is not a lot of tolerance in these parts. This knife assembles completely from friction, and it takes about 10 minutes to put everything together, and here it is. Now I feel like I'm playing CS2 for real, and I just want to start bee hopping down the garden, honestly. You can spent hours just flicking these things around and learn some really cool tricks thanks for watching the whole way through whoever is listening to this you're a real one if you made it this far comment your favorite knife and i'll make it in one of my videos